What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com. And in this video, we're going to talk all about how do you master the craft of creating a hyper casual game. Now, if you're not in the gaming market, like I'm not, there's still a lot of value to be learned about how to do market research, how to really conceptualize a game format and then what are the high performing video ads that you can run to get people into your game joining me is a longtime friend of mine i reached out to him i was like we haven't talked for ages his name is i'm gonna probably butcher it but kevin Wolston home. He is the former CEO of rising high Academy, which focuses on all the aspects of hyper game, ca hyper casual game design. They were actually acquired by the leading publisher. Homa games in March of 2022 is now the community studio director at Homa and continues to help game developers create powerful, hyper casual game. If you're not familiar with Homa games, well, they are the top publisher. They were top 10 publisher of 2021 and they're one of their games, Merge Master, was most downloaded of Q1. And Kevin, I don't want to leave this out, but you have 13 Apple feature games that you've created on your own. So super excited to have you on, but welcome to the show, my friend. I am thrilled to be here, and it's good to catch off after such a long time, Steve. Um, yeah. Love what you've been doing over here. It's great to see you're still fighting the fight and uh, still going strong. So yeah, I'm thrilled to be here today. We're one of the OGs. It's getting some people are falling it is off. True. It is talking. true. Yeah. Um, it's interesting you mentioned it. about the 13 games as well. It's a long time ago now, about five years ago now. But yeah, that's how we kind of started off in, in the industry with uh, building our own games from a Rising High studio at that point. Uh, yeah, we yeah. saw a lot of success. And uh, yeah, it seems like 100 years ago and a lot of things have changed. But yeah, still still at our core, we're, we're all about the games, really. I want to say hi to a few people that are joining us. We got another Kevin out in Florida. I swear this is like a auto filled Kevin. Yeah, like it's just good afternoon from Lakeland, Florida. <laughs> like that just. Right. And then we got Adrian. Hi, Kevin. Blue Cloud veteran here. Yeah, I remember. And I think I saw Adrian over in uh, Amsterdam, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah, he's out in Ireland, so close. Yeah, yeah, Ricardo. yeah. No, we met. We met in Amsterdam um, at the Blue Cloud event. So what is oh, up, cool. Adrian? I remember. <laughs> we got Joe, we got Mike B, and then we got Rudy as well. All right, let's start off with this, Kevin. Like you, 13 Apple features, that's a great accomplishment, especially back in the day where, you know, it's just led to so many downloads. So it was a key part of any user acquisition strategy, especially from indie game developers. But when you're starting to conceptualize a game, where do you like to start? It's a great question. Um, I think for the most part, you want to be looking at what the market's liking and what's being released from the bigger publishers and the bigger players, whichever genre you're looking at. What are you, who are you up against and what's working well in the market? And it's really easy to get, you, to get too sort of in your own bubble, creating the game that you want to play. And whilst we're all super passionate about this, most of the time you really want to think about the commercial aspect and is it, is it, is your game as good as what's coming out of all the big studios? And is it in the same, does it feel the same and look the same to a certain degree of what the bigger players are doing? Because they're testing everything and they're releasing stuff that is purely data driven and they understand exactly what the market's liking. So by looking at what they're doing and taking your lead from them is normally a good place to start. So you can look at the Google Play Store, what's in the top charts. You can look at the iOS Store, of course, and using tools like Sensor Tower, or we actually have our own market watcher inside Homer that we use. Uh, but you can generally just try and get yourself involved in what's coming out all the time, what are the mechanics, what is trending in terms of the games that are consistently up in those charts. And I think that would be very much the first place you should start and build a build a habit around keeping an eye on what the market's liking, um, I think would be my very first piece of advice. So just look at what the competition is doing all the time to get a feel of the market and try and use 
your own benchmarks as much as you can saying, hold on a minute, I keep seeing this game. What is up with this game? Because obviously it's working. And whilst you don't want to copy, because copying's dumb and you're never going to do very well if you just clone something. But if you um, if you be inspired by, I mean, it's a bit of a cliche at this point when it comes to games, but if you take the inspiration from those, work out what's doing, what you think's doing well with it, why is it fun, and then go from there. I think that's the best place. One thing that you mentioned, these big studios are data driven. What is sure. the type of data that you should be looking at in the early days? So the really when you start, it, it all depends on your strategy of like how you're gonna get your users. You know, it's all very well making a game, but dropping it into the store is just not gonna cut it to to clear through the noise of all the games that get released every day. So you wanna start thinking about how you're gonna attract people to your game which leads you on to what would be user acquisition and, and all of that. And this, this is the same for, for apps as well. You know, how are you, are you going to run some, spend some monies or are you going to look to partner someone, uh, partner with someone like a bigger publisher such as Homer or there's loads out there depending on your, your niche and your, and what you're building. But are you, are you strong at building games and you could do with uh, partnership with a publisher to ensure that they can handle the marketing of it. And, it, and at which case you want to start looking at how you're going to advertise and what formats work best. And typically you're running ads uh, on the likes of Facebook or TikTok or, or whatever to try and drive users to your game or your app. Um, and I think there's a whole conversation to spin off from there. So how, where do you want to take this one, Steve? Where do you want to take it, Kevin? Where do you well, want to spin it? Well, I think obviously you need to work out your strengths in terms of what are you good at? Do you know anything about user acquisition? And, and more importantly, do you have uh, some budget for it? Now, you don't need a ton. You can start off with like, I mean, probably most people say you can start off with five bucks a day, but that's probably not going to cut it. Uh, you probably want to start 50 bucks a day and run a test for the, for a week and then start seeing the numbers from that so what is your cpi your cost per install and what is your day one retention which is basically how many people come back and play your game after that that sort of first day so day zero would be the first day of install day one would be who's coming back tomorrow or the next day to keep playing your game so how low can i buy installs for and how many people are coming back and there's various other KPIs or key performance indicators that you can track, playtime being one of them. So how long is someone in your game? Because you could have a potentially higher cost per install, but if someone's playing your game for a long time, then you have the opportunity to show more ads to them. So the lifetime value of that user, even though they might cost a little bit more to acquire, could still you know, end up being profitable if you say you, you brought them for a for a dollar, but they actually stay long enough in your game to make you one dollar ten in advertising that you on the ads that you show them, then you've made ten cents. So then it's like, how do you start scaling up and stuff if that ten cents is a, a decent number for you? I hope that makes sense. It does make sense, Kevin. One of the things that we we like to do for our clients is do in for subscription apps. We like to look at the conversion analysis and what I do sure. is just look at the, all the new loads, how many trials are you getting? How many tr of those trials are turning to subscribers and then coming up with a rough estimate of revenue per download. And then when people ask like, Hey, you know, I want to run Apple search ads. I want to do all these things. I say, look, we can profitably run at about a dollar cost per install or $2, whatever it is. Are there like these simple numbers that you'd like to look at beyond play time, beyond retention that helps you kind of figure out, all right, I'm making this much from a certain player. Does that make sense? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, sorry. You just broke up right at the crucial part there, but I think it's, it, I, I get, I get where you're going from. I think it depends and it's very difficult because there's various KPIs that we take into consideration and that will be dependent on the type of game and obviously the sort of, uh, how much we can, how low the CPI can go, and also depending on which network. So users on Facebook will be different than users on, say, App Loving Ad Network, and the users on TikTok will be different. So it's a very vast matrix of that, which I, I 
really couldn't dream to get into today. But I think what was interesting from there, Steve, what you said is like, because you do a lot of subscription stuff, it's the testing, doing a lot of A-B testing on your call to actions and stuff like that. I think it will be imperative to see whether or not um, you can get the highest performance on that conversion to ensure that you're really deep diving into the data that you've got available to you and find and really identify what's most meaningful to you. So whilst each one, uh, each metric will be different per product, um, you need to be tracking your data. And this is the difference between typically the newer people start out don't see the importance of tracking the data, whereas people who have been around a long time, you use a more data-driven approach to make more informed decisions, and it can have huge impact on your products and your bottom line, of course. Speaking of data, are there any specific tools that you like to use from a, I know game analytics is a big popular sure. one. Sure, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very different story from when we were building games and now being part of Homer, we have this whole technology back end that we have our own tools to track all this stuff, which is, uh, to be perfectly transparent, I'm not massively sort of in, in tune with all the tools that we've got. It goes so deep, but we have our own analytics tools. We have our own SDK that tracks all this stuff and... I think we're tracking something like 700 million requests a day or something like that. It's absolutely insane. But I want to make sure that I don't uh, overstretch anything here. But, yeah, I think game, analytic, game analytics is a really good place to start for games, obviously. And that you can, tr you can track all sorts of things for that, and it's free. So you can track session length. You can track who's falling off at what levels. Um, I think it, the sky's the sort of limit in terms of what you can track with game analytics, which is a really great tool. So I'd highly recommend starting off with that and that's free. And I think AdMob as well, if you're putting sort of uh, some monetization SDK, they got a lot of good tracking because I think that's, um, I think that is, um, that's tied into Firebase now. So the AdMob and Firebase go hand in hand from Google. And actually you can check out, uh, uh, not for a shameless plug here, but we had uh, Thomas and Cyprian from the Google team over um, to do a masterclass for us that's a video, uh, available over on the Homer Games YouTube channel. Um, and they tell you okay. how that all works. And it's really good. And like I said, I'm not trying to plug that at all. It's more to do with if you if you if you're this is new to you, that would be a really good resource to go and check out because they walk you through it hand in hand from Google themselves. So uh, that would be my recommendation, I believe. Kevin, don't mind me. I, it doesn't matter. I want people to get value. So if you guys are providing value, it seems like great content. Put, sure. Plug away. That is that is all we're all here for as well. I like what you said too. I mean, it, I was reading through this. It's like we use our in-house technologies to make your app perfect. And then the, it you said the same thing, right? Like, hey, you install our SDK and start iterating on your game to improve all the metrics from cost of acquisition to retention and session times. Now, when you're talking about, I had this discussion with a friend of mine in the app space too, he's out in Canada, but he was talking about like, even at post-launch, like level design, like really looking at the data, tweaking little things. Are there certain tweaks that you like to make? I know in the hyper-casual market, maybe the session time isn't as long. They were not in the hyper-casual, but probably more in the casual end of things. But are there things that you like to like try to do to improve retention? Is it game design? Is it I mean, level design, is it gameplay? What is it that you look at? I think it's all of it. It's the, it's the really quick answer to it. There's never just that one thing, and you have to take a holistic approach to it. I think in terms of retention, you want to be tracking when users are falling, falling off, right? So it could well be that your onboarding is shocking at the start and people are bailing really quickly because they just don't understand it or you haven't got the idea of the game over properly. Or indeed, they all might be bailing at level three where you see a massive drop off. Whereas like, without knowing that and tracking that data, you wouldn't realize that they're all falling off, off at level three because the way you've got it set up is too damn hard and it's too frustrating and like people just, they just leave at that point. So I think it's level design, game design. There's no one, there's no secret source or one one size fits all answer here. I think it's taking this, uh, looking at all the data points that you're recording and making sure that whatever you are 
sort of tracking it's a meaningful don't just put the analytics in for the sake of it be really um uh, what's the word i'm looking for be really clear on what your what your goals are and what you're trying to track um and the best the best thing to do is just start so track at end of level uh track at session length um it really do, it really is dependent on the type of game as you mentioned the hyper casual tend to have a low session length in 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 general the arcade hyper casuals at least you know 35 to one uh, a minute sessions is is not untypical whereas the arcade idol uh which we see is basically dominating the new releases from from everyone right now that's more about play time and session time in terms of minutes of play so there the, the, is horses for courses in terms of what your it what is important to you in your game and what you think what you think would be most meaningful to understand about your player's behavior i mean you can go so deep on this it's bonkers um but i think it's important to know that you should just chuck something in and and try it and then see make sure you're getting some results back and you might go oh okay maybe i didn't realize that this boss here he's actually broken and if you you can't kill him or something you know and because you play your game or you use your app so much you just you might have just missed it so it's very illuminating in terms of uh understanding some player behavior even on a basic level i think that's basically it so if i was properly taking notes i would say session time what was it like for hyper casual games you want to be around the 30 to a minute yeah, minute and a half? It, it all depends it's something it's in in a round of 45 seconds to a minute is kind of typical to have this you know this snackable tick tockish kind of attention span sort of level and of course at that time the normal break in the game you would be showing an ad which works hand in hand with the monetization. So they're level-based games that show an ad after every minute that most of us hate, but it is the model. And essentially we, you know, if you don't like it, you can, you can buy the in-app purchase to, to remove it. Um, so session, look at the, the level drop-offs, the play time, and essentially the uh, session time, I've lost time. my, help me out here, Steve. I totally derped out there. What was it? What did I say? So uh, session time, uh, dropping so off on the levels, and oh. general your general retention day one, three, and seven, I think, would be good markers. You know, I think one of the big mistakes that I've seen other game developers make is, no, I'm not an expert in this, so you can, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, but they, they try to spice up the game so much. When I've talked to the homas of the world, the other publishers, they they say, look, just give me the blank, like give me the dumbest prototype ever. Like, because we want to see gameplay. We want to see level design. We don't need fancy graphics in the very beginning. We'll add that in later on. But in the early days, we just want to see gameplay and how long people are playing. And we don't even care about monetization that much yeah so when we do our test there is no ads in there we're looking for core gameplay so really if you want to well, let's dive into some real details here you're looking at your core loop you've got to get your core loop of your game the most important part of your prototype is your core loop and how fun is it what is the thing that you do over and over in the game that is fun without any fancy sort of meta that we will we 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 call it which is like do you need all the extra stuff that you see in games? But is the core action that you do time and time again, is that fun or satisfying to do? You know, we, I always like to, to quote this thing from the the guys who made, uh, who made Mario, where they spent like three weeks uh, with just Mario in a, in a, on a flat plane. And all they did for three weeks is just trying to make his jump fun. Without anything else in the game, they spent so long just making that core action of jumping in Mario fun in of itself without any levels or something. And it's kind of a good benchmark to think about when you're doing this. Is the thing, fancy graphics and big effects is not going to make your rubbish game any better. You've fancy got to... Gra- oh, Sorry I got some that. mad feedback there. Okay. Uh, yeah, so fancy, fancy graphics is not going to make your rubbishy game any better. It's just going to make it look 
better. So you really want to like boil it down to the core of what makes your game fun and is it enjoyable to play without any sort of whistles and bangs because if you can get that right people can forgive you like less than brilliant graphics although it has to be said uh, 2022 we have seen a serious increase in quality um, mm -hmm. the the studios have matured a lot so the quality bar is it has been raised higher but you really want to concentrate on the core fun of your game I love it okay Sorry, Kevin, for the feedback. Yeah, that's all right. I noticed it's like, so a, real, so a little bit of a lag here on the stream for me, so I'm just looking a little bit stupid uh, on my own. Yeah. Joe says, great stream today. Kevin's full of insight. I like getting deep burr into the knowledge. Kevin, Thank you want to promote that. your home games right here, so just search for home games in YouTube, and you'll find all the great stuff that Kevin's doing. And he's, he, he's putting in work today. He just said he got done doing a stream himself. I do. So this is this is where I'm going to interrupt for that shameless self plug. So if you also search for Homer Academy over on YouTube, that's our dedicated YouTube channel for the community based stuff we're doing over at Homer. And we indeed do live streams every Friday, uh, just uh, an hour before this one. So that's it. So you should just see the latest stream come up from us. And uh, yeah, so you can come and join me and we geek out on this sort of stuff for the hyper casual market and game design um, every week. And we've been doing this for years inside the academy and we're now doing it under the Home Academy YouTube channel. So cool. I love it. All right, Kevin, I do want to talk about the, the monetization side of things, but I want to hold it sure. for part two. So in part two, we like to start off part two of every live stream with some dad jokes. I know you don't have any equipped, Kevin. Maybe you got time to Google right now, but I'm going to hit you with a dad All joke. Right. You can battle out with the guests of mine. I found some around games, Kevin. So I'm going to lead you to some of this, the game stuff. Let me get my sound effects ready to go. Where's my sound effects? There you go. All right. Ready to go. All right. There you go. Got to Got to get a warm up one in. Okay. Let me find a good one that I really like. Da, 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 da. All right. Since you brought up Mario, why does Mario, why doesn't Mario like to use the internet? I do not know. Oh, thank you, Kevin. You shouldn't know. <laughs> That's the best way of answering. He's afraid of the browsers. Bowser's okay. browser. Like, yeah, this is wrong. why I didn't prepare any because it's kind of painful, isn't it? <laughs> uh yeah, right. I'm trying to Google. I'm trying to Google, and I know I should have got a little bit, um, a little bit more prepared I'll, I'll give, here, Steve. I'll give you some time. All right, guys, we're gonna take a look at audits. Look, Kevin goes live every Friday, nine eight a.m. Pacific on YouTube where he breaks down the hyper casual. So, Kevin, are you doing similar things where you kind of look at the top hyper casual games? Yeah, Every very week. much so. So, uh, yeah, we've been doing this inside the academy. Obviously, we had uh, the academy, uh, the Rising High Academy, as it were. We were running that for a long time because we get kept getting great asked questions on how we were doing everything. So uh, this is a show we've been running for the last three years, really. Uh, maybe a bit longer. So we come on every Friday now, live on YouTube. I think it's 7 Pacific. I got that time wrong for you, Steve. Sorry about that. Um, but we literally look at what's been released. I curate all the latest games that are coming out in the charts of that week from the big publishers and a lot of the prototypes that we see releasing from our, our own little list we have. And uh, we boil that down to five or ten, and then we will play three of those games. So I will come on. I download them. I haven't played them before. So we, we kind of open them up together. And we just see what they've got going on and what we like about it and what we don't and discuss, you know, do we do we think the game's any good or what's its potential on that? And it's a, it's very much a conversational thing, just like today with you. Uh, we just yeah. talk about stuff and, you know, hopefully share some nuggets here and there to um, basically do your homework for you so you don't have to do this market research. Um, we boil it down, pick the best stuff and then play through some and just keep your, keep your eye on what's happening in the market. I love it, Kevin. If I could suggest some things, because we started doing this too. Have people submit some games and then give them some feedback too. 
And you don't just yeah, I, uh, the, the, we, I am thinking about doing that. The, the interesting thing about the hyper-casual market is that people don't want to share too much because they're always in this testing phase and there's always that thing that someone else could take the idea and run with it. So it's a very sort of, um, it's kind of a closer guarded sort of secretive time of thing which is a nightmare for me and the likes of you who want to share and to talk about this stuff uh, but obviously people don't want their ideas stolen um, and things like that but uh, what we are going to be doing is some post-mortems uh, which means that the prototypes have been built uh, they haven't quite made the numbers and then we'll try and figure out how we can do it after the event once mm -hmm. we know that they they've kind of had their had their cycle so to speak so that is coming we've got loads of different shows coming up inside the academy as well so but yeah i like that idea i'd love to do it steve you're very lucky that people send you games <laughs> i would love to if you will have me i'd love to come on one of these fridays and do it with you all right guys if, if you you're want... self invited yeah absolutely if you guys want access to uh if you want my feedback essentially go to appmasters.com slash audit and then we'll have you on a future or feature your app in a future live stream i think it might be a little bit frozen but kevin do you do you have enough time to find a joke now or we want to go hit the I, app i audit? did look steve i'm gonna bail on the jokes i'm um, sorry i've let the side down i know um i couldn't find anything that was sufficiently corny enough believe it or not <laughs> all right all right, <laughs> Ricardo's got you. Throw out a dad joke here. There's only one thing I can't deal with, and that's a deck of cards glued together. There you go. <laughs> Ricardo, always coming through. I love it. All right, so we got this game, Farkle Frenzy, and I have to be careful the way I say that. <laughs> Farkle Frenzy. So Cameron says he wants some ASO help, but we're, we've got Kevin on to really break down the, the game design stuff, the screenshots, the app icon. So let's start with that, Kevin. Anything from the App Store presence front that you want to hit on? Yeah, I think um, I think for Farkle Frenzy, I think uh, you, someone just mentioned about the uh, the ASO. I definitely add like dash fun go dice game or, or be a little bit more aggressive on that title there for me. Um, I mm -hmm. think the icon is okay. It doesn't really pop out as much as I think I would like it to. Uh, I do like the screenshots. You know, uh, this is again, this is always always intended in the spirit uh, of positivity. I think the screenshots are nice. I think um, when you're doing a game like this, though, I think you should be trying. And this looks very clinical, and it looks kind of more appy or more of a uh, more of an a, 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 a Oh my goodness! Let me start that again. It looks more of like a a product or like a, an app sort of thing rather than the game. So I'd like it a little bit more fun and a little bit more whimsical rather than almost like a almost like an information type thing. But actually, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, but yeah, just take a look at the icons for the games that Steve just showed there from the Homer account. Um, and like yeah. a classic solitaire yeah exactly look at the sparkles and the cards it's just a little bit more fun um, and I think you never want to forget that your games are entertainment and you want to make it a little bit more fun and a little bit less clinical now the good thing is uh, I'm not so up up to it right now but I know you can now do a b testing on the iOS store so I would swap the icon out with something a bit wacky and run that for a week or a bit. You can certainly do the experiments on Google Play if you've got a Google Play version of this. Um, just try it out. It costs very little. It doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, maybe put a 3D dice on there, you know, and just, just make it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more lively, I'd say. I like that. I like that idea. How important are icons? Because I always feel like it's like, does it really make a big difference? Don't people look at? I don't know. I mean, we more? we will we will test the heck out of a ton of icons. But you know, you said about the, you know, the the conversion rate of your app store page conversion and stuff. I mean, why wouldn't you do it? Because it doesn't really take very long. Now it could well be that sure, um, the the numbers probably won't make they won't move the needle to a, a massive degree but hey if you get um if you get a few more then why not and that's learning for next time as well so would i spend 300 weeks doing a fantastic icon and would it make the huge difference probably not but i would definitely test it because you might as well 
Uh, that would be my attitude to it. I, I agree with you. And I think, you know, it depends on how, how big of a game you're playing. If you're running a lot of UA, that small little increase will actually help out because you're running hundreds of thousands, $10,000 oh, a sure. day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I completely yeah, agree. So, I mean, when, once those numbers start scaling up, it's like, you know, if yeah. Amazon can just get an extra penny on this conversion, then they make billions or whatever. Right. So it's all, it's all relative, but I think it's really good practice to play around with this stuff. I think so too. And it says located. If I were to ooh, say that to Cameron, it, this looks like a little dated icon. Like, you look at just study the top games like see what they're doing like look at the card games look at when i did here was i looked at i just searched for farkle in the app stores right here just to see what game icons are coming up but you can see there's farkle you can see this dice up front and center so i really like having kevin what i've been promoting lately is i like having the main keyword like up front big old and center like right here so i would just play up farkle and if you're gonna say modern look you better like really walk the walk right walk the talk because it doesn't look so modern in my eye but look you got decent reviews so who am i to say but i would change that up too yeah i think yeah. one important thing you can do and obviously i haven't de delved too deep in this so we, we had to put a quick go but you know put screenshot your app store uh page there and then take these you know the first the top five that steve's looking at now and put them all side by side and be honest with yourself, which one would you click on? Because mm -hmm. I really like the uh, rolling dice of that Farkle online there. Uh, even the, the screenshots look more vibrant, looks more casino-y, looks more fun. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that number two, the 10,000 dice game one, I think they look like they've done a pretty good job of making it look interactive and fun. Um, and of course, yep. it's pretty brutal when you hear this stuff, but this is your competition. And if you're not doing a better job uh, than them then you're going to suffer for it so i would i would be looking at looking at those screenshots there and um, it's a really nice uh tool you got there on that follow I haven't used this that much steve yeah it's I, good i love it it's very easy to use and it's one of my favorite avis so tools for just quick little searches on keywords and then uh, i like this is not working right now but they're working on it but this is like a keyword recommendation tool that's how i do keyword research but it's got currently it. not working yeah nice. okay i love that. i think we're pretty good i think on from the aso side one thing that we are testing i know back in the day when kevin and i were just little newbies in the well not newbies but you know back a few years ago the aso thing where what, what we used to do was double like duplicate repeat a keyword in the title when the title was 256 way back in the days and so i am testing now like having the type the keyword in the title and the subtitle to see if that makes a difference i'm noticing that maybe this that has article twice right here so maybe test that out this seems like it's been not updated in a while because this looks like 50 characters not 30 but i would try repeating that cameron just to see if it would make a big difference for you instead of playing the, the classic dice game like kevin said have dice game in the title but maybe repeat article and dice couple of times in the title and subtitle because does that's the main title still, does the title still carry more weight though steve than this uh, the subtitle i believe so and the what we noticed it depends on the keyword but one of our clients were able to rank number one for a keyword even though it was in the spanish mexico keyword field as a reminder the us app store indexes that spanish mexico localization so if you put english keywords in there it helps your us rankings and so we had this keyword that had pretty good traffic low competition and it was low yeah and it was just in the spanish mexico keyword field not in the title not in the subtitle we ran some campaigns on it and we were able to get it to number one so i think it depends on the keyword but i would say yes in as a general rule the title has more weight than the, the subtitle nice the old spanish trick as well i like it still still going strong still going so one of the things i like to do is think about especially for games some of the older companies that no longer are in games or maybe don't aren't in mobile that may have some search traffic so i'll just use this example without giving away too much but i'll, I'll go on amazon sometimes and i'll look up farkle and i'll see if there's anything from a keyword perspective that i might be able to find or even put like instead of farkle maybe put dice game and then try to see if there's anything that might 
be interesting for me. The example I used way back in the day, there was a word game called Banana Grams that does not have an app. And so when I did keyword research on that keyword, keyword twice, I found that it actually had pretty decent volume on the app store, but very low competition. So oh, nice. it's like, kind of makes sense, right? Like you're looking for a dice game, maybe you're not looking for Farkle, but yeah, look, if I have a Farkle game, I'm gonna run out of keywords to even target. Like what else can I target, right? Like it's Farkle, that's pretty much it. So yeah, that's right. the way I about ASO from that standpoint. Cool. Okay. Shall we get into the game, Kevin? Because let's that's what- yeah, let's do it, let's do it. All right, here it is. Let me line this up perfectly. All right, got a ton of apps. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow your lead here because you're the expert here. So this is the first screen I see, Kevin. Anything you want to add to this? Okay, so I think um, again, it, if they've gone for this like modern design, I, I think they've gone for a more sleek sort of professional sort of look. I think uh, for me, um, I would, I mean. I would definitely try and make it uh, a little bit more animated. I think when we're when we're loading up a game, we kind of want it to be a little bit more animated in terms of you know even if you create a logo, you've got a kind of a bog standard front uh, font on your logo there, and um, that mm. has gone real quick. We've also um, and I think we've still got the phones um, bar at the top there, like the uh, Wi-Fi bar and. And all of that, that's an easy fix. Get rid of that because we don't want them to know what the time is and how long they've been playing. So let's take that off straight away. Um, I didn't for know me, you could do that. go on. No, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could get rid of that. Sure, yeah, definitely. I, I can't remember how, but it's very easy. You just uh, I don't I don't know the technical side of it, but yeah, that's that was actually uh, to be honest, it was kind of a pet hate of mine because it was really annoying. Um, so you can definitely get rid of that. And um, the other thing is here, we've got, it's all very green. Um, so I think single player um, and you've got shop. So if I'm seeing single player, where's multiplayer? And do mm -hmm. I have another, like that seems to be my only option to play singly. So that's kind of a weird that it's single player. Um, and again, try and take this in the spirit it's intended. We're just being brutal here to hopefully... Um, help a little bit and it's all very green and all the buttons were green um and yeah that's basically um the feedback on that on that first screen there you probably don't really need it i would i would prefer to like go a little bit straight into it a little bit more i have to admit when i played this i did never heard of farkle and i don't know if that's a um I just never heard of the game. So I was constantly reading the rules and didn't understand it for quite some time. Um, but yeah, is it is it a popular game in the States or is it just me being an idiot and I've just never come across it? Hey, this is, I'm an idiot too because I've never heard of this game as well. So. Okay, because I, I was thinking it was a bit more like poker and it's got, it's got an essence of the sort of poker type, full houses and stuff. Uh, but I got mm. very confused and I was constantly reading the rules um and I was, I was i was still confused up until uh today when i replayed it for a little while um in terms of the game i think it's um and again it's uh i think being 2d it it doesn't feel particularly engaging to play especially as yeah. i don't know the rules um it's quite yeah. dry um mm -hmm. And I think it could do with being a little bit more 3D if that's possible. And I know that's probably a big ask, but when we're looking at some of the games and certainly some of your competitors, they definitely look like there was some 3D dice rolling going on there. Um, so I would I think I'd like to see it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more 3D done. Um, anyway, I, Steve, you, you, what do you think here that before I charge off rebuilding this whole game? No, I agree. I, it feels like if you think because, you know, games like there's there's an element of like, I don't know, animations, cool animation sound effects. Now, obviously, I don't have any sound effects turned on right you now, but that's what you kind of want. I feel like it is completely dry right now. The fact that I roll and then all the changes. Sorry, I was trying to change the audio to see if there's any audio coming out of this. But the fact that when I roll, let's just keep a few. I agree with Kevin. Like, we're probably not the audience because we never heard of Farkle. So we probably wouldn't play download this game anyways. 
but when I'm hitting roll, whoops, no, did it just, when I'm hitting roll, like this animation feels so dull. Like it doesn't, even yeah, the first time eat. roll, like the first time it comes out, like it'd be fun to just see the dice come out of the screen and just roll onto the screen, like come out right here and just roll onto the screen and show that. And then I'm fine with like the, when I, when I keep certain dice, and then these chains, I'm fine with that. But like the first time, even the subtle, like put, show some animation so that it's not just like, feels boring to me right now. It doesn't even yeah, feel it does, like. And it, and it, it does. And I think that's a really good, uh, a, a good word to use on that. Sorry, Steve, I talked over you there. I didn't mean to cut across you, but you said it felt boring. And I think that's a really brutal way of putting it. But I think it has to be said, you know, you're right. It does feel a little bit dated. Um, the yeah. sound effects are actually quite nice. I thought that does have sound effects. They're okay. they're enough, um, but I think the whole I think it the whole thing lacks pizzazz and wow. Um, and I would imagine it would be more um, a little bit more fancy. Uh, one thing I will say, just as a quick bit of feedback, because it just reminded me there because I didn't understand how to play. I was constantly uh, going for the rules. Um, and when you press, I pressed end game by mistake because I my finger fumbled, um, and it and I was mm -hmm. I was crushing it. I was doing really well, and I just wanted to check the rules because I didn't want to lose. And I pressed end game, and it ended my game immediately. So I'd highly recommend that you put a, like, a, are you sure you want to end the game? Pop up on that end game button because um, I was yeah. really disappointed. I was finally doing quite well, and I I went to check the rules, and I I killed myself the great feedback like last week we had somebody on app broda and they talked about different formats we're talking about like an exit, that exit sure you want to exit so to kevin's point like he didn't want to actually end game he accidentally did it and so you can say like do you actually want to end the game and then there's another ad opportunity camera cameron for you because kevin like when would you, you talked about end of level showing a like interstitial ad like when would he when would cameron show an ad because i mean I have to well it all depends i mean a lot of the time um we don't it's not uncommon to have interstitials pop up uh on timer but this is i mean i be, before we go to that i think when we're talking about onboarding in games and we we want to make this first level really short so we get into it and we understand we do that full sort of game loop so you start off and we have to reach ten thousand. Um, I would cut that down to something that makes sense, maybe like 1500 or something. And at that, at that point, I would show the interstitial at game over, like a typical break in the game flow. Um, but I would build up to, I think 10,000 is a very long game session for this. Um, you might get okay. some banner impressions out of it, but I think 10,000 seemed like a really long game to me. Um, so I definitely consider like maybe starting at 1500, then maybe 3000 and then 5,000 and maybe even, uh, where you've got, we, where we had that single player, you could split that into like timed games, uh, maybe against the clock or different sort of targets to choose how long you want to play. Cause it may well be that I'm on the subway or something and I just, I know I've got five minutes, but if I play, if I have to choose this game, it's going to take me like 15 minutes to play or something. I mean, I'm making that up obviously, but I would try and um, split this out. A, you'll get more content for nothing because you're just doing game modes. You give it a little bit more uh, meat to the content. And I would like to see more of a battle mode or timed mode and stuff like that, all keeping the same core mechanic. Um, which leads me a very long way of saying I would normally do it at the end of each game whenever you either win or lose, Steve. But because you're playing for quite a long amount of time, the you, you're not going to get that many impressions um, because of the length of time it takes to actually see an advert. I love it. I would have, I would have suggested the same thing. I felt like it's session length is too long. Even in the beginning, you can easily ask Cameron, are you familiar with Farkle? Are you new to Farkle? Because if I'm new, then you'd be like, to Kevin's point, I think you should do what Kevin said, like have all these game modes because it's the same core gameplay, but it's different ways of me interacting. And it feels like there's more to this game than just this simple thing that you've 
put out there. So it adds something to the game without you having to do much work. But if I'm new to it, start off with the shorter session, get fast, let me understand the game, and then get me into a longer game in that regard too. I would look at phase 10. I really like that game. I know the the guy who created the the card game, but they have a an app too. And it's like the same gameplay as phase 10, but broken out to different levels and all that stuff. And it kept me really interested because if you ever played phase 10, it's a very long game, the classic game, but they sort of mixed it and then brought it into an app form. And you, I think what you're doing is just taking Farkle and putting it into that form instead of like taking Farkle and then remixing it to an app user. Yeah, that's exactly it. You want to put the camera and stamp on it. How can you put your own twist on this on this classic game? Um, and I think modes is a really good way. And you could also have like some risk reward stuff where like the computer is going to win. And maybe if you watch a video, you can like punch your opponent out and you get two th two free goes or something. Or you could have uh, some bonus rounds where you know if um, if you're going to lose like do you want to you just scored 700 do you want to double it up for one more roll of the dice you know there's there's no sort of uh, make it a little bit more angsty and a little bit more edgy and i think that's where i would take this one and i actually like those breaks cuz this feels like redundant i'm looking at the same thing there's no animation it's just like a blank screen that, that we just keep looking at this that's it that's all yeah. we keep looking at and i, I and think so, the word you like, used a uh, uh, Sorry, Steve, our lag here is horrendous, so I hope I don't keep talking over you. There's a lot of lag on the stream. But, yeah, I think oh, what, what I was, was going to say is that you use the word dry, and I think that's a really good way of describing it. It's just There's just nothing overly uh, exciting about it, and it does feel quite dry. But, you know, it's a really it's a cool thing. You've, got a, you've done a lot of good work here, so don't be despondent. I think you just need to think, okay, how can I put the camera and twist on this, and how can I make – this is my version – of like super far call or something like that right uh, and, and introduce people who love the format to a whole new way of playing it in terms of modes and and all that kind of good stuff love it all right i want to say hi to guitar blast thank you miguel good to see you week in week out and then hydro coach good evening he wants to be featured on a future live stream here hope one day you can take a look at our app we do have a long list but just just being hanging there. We will do that. Hey, Kevin, one of the things I wanted to touch on with part two, and I think this is a great point to do it, is talk to me about the, the monetization side of things. Because on the subscription side, and this is sort of what I think on the game side too, so you correct me if I'm wrong, but this is sort of the tip that I've been saying, is on the subscription side of things, and even if it's in-app purchases, we've seen that if you show your paywall, your pricing page, your shop page here, on the onboarding process, then that actually increases conversions because most people buy during that first time user flow. So what I was thinking, we're with a couple of different game developers too, and they've been telling me that, hey, you know, anytime I do a, a promo, I do something that has like a starter pack, for instance, I do well from a monetization standpoint in that. So I was thinking that, hey, have an onboarding flow. So Farkle, it could be like best practice, engage the user. Are you familiar with Farkle? How familiar are you? Do you want to play, play these different game modes? And at the end, you know, give them a little promo deal that says, hey, one on three different dice and remove ads for Ford 49, which all in total might have been, you know, 1099 as an example. Like, is that a good practice from a game side? Yeah, of absolutely. Of course. Yeah. So the shop, the, we're looking at the shop now. And again, it's a very atypical shop. And you, you're right, it's the positioning of how you market and you need to become a marketeer um, to remove the ads. Why would I remove the ads? Uh, we should at the top here be seeing get get green dice, get orange dice, get the hacker dice, get the blue dice, get the remove ads, and you get a super duper camera and bonus at the end, all for two ninety nine, and it would have been like $12 or something. That should be your top promo at, at, at the top of the shop there to make these bundles to uh, let the players think they're getting a really good deal. And at the end of the day, you don't care. You don't, you don't care if they buy and they, you want them to buy stuff and it doesn't really matter what they buy um so where it says remove all ads from being shown like just just say like fuck all the hell out of the ads they're all gone and get all the dice packs 299 
there you go and that's just way more fun and tongue-in-cheek and it's like you know just think a little bit more spicy about this um, and make it more alluring and even better if you've ever brought an in-app purchase uh, in a game especially because not so much a, a product app because that's a different per, uh, buyer proposition but in a game if you've ever bought anything why did you buy it and what did you buy and does your shop match up to to that experience yeah i love it. and what we've seen is when people buy you know people who pay pay attention so we've actually seen an increase in retention if we get more people to buy so it's like a win -win they've, they've, they've now got skin in the game and they don't want to feel stupid for buying the in-app purchase so for sure they're going to use it you know it's kind of a it's kind of normal consumer behavior, I'd say. One of the things I was you as you were talking, I was thinking about is and I've seen this is like, let's say, yeah, this hacker dice is 199, so it's a little bit more, but maybe give away one of your dice for free. Like watch an ad, watch, you know, watch a couple of different ads. Of course, yeah, that, that's a great shout. It, it's one for free. Yeah, that's a great shout. I mean, I'm a big believer of giving away a few free freebies anyway, just to get the player in the mode of you know getting used to there's a sh honestly i don't even sure i remembered there was a shop in this game which is disappointing um so <laughs> i think you should uh, after your first game say hey thanks for playing the first game guess what here's your free new color set or something and by the way the dice are pretty average colors you know uh, if you're gonna make skins i would definitely like let's have a like a i mean i don't know like let's have a let's have an iron man colored one or something or batman on there or something like that right something a bit more snazzy that's going to make me want to uh, part with my money i think oh you got a gradient around there like okay that. that's kind of a little almost like a yeah i, I just don't think it's going to cut it you know you, if you're going to do skins you want to make it a little bit mad i'd say i love it all right cool Let's get into if there's any. So looks like we got some new subscribers for you, Kevin. How oh, cool. Joe just subbed. Yeah. And then I what think is up, what Joe? Was... <laughs> and then Rudy said, you got a new subscriber, Kevin. And nice. Great tips. What is that, Rudy? And then we got Ms. Ethio here. You guys are really awesome. testing my. All right, Kevin, I got another joke for you, okay? Go I'm going to win this, but maybe. Ricardo's got another one too. Yeah, come okay. on, you gotta have my back here, Ricardo. <sighs> I'm gonna do a geeky joke. Here we go. Why can't PC gamers use Uber? Two know. more compatible drivers. <laughs> That's an old one for us. Wow. PC people. All right, Ricardo, you got one for us? In there. Kevin, next time you you know, if when I come to your YouTube stream, I'm gonna come with jokes. So you better be ready for that. You, you're, uh, more you're, to to to. To. you're more than welcome to. You're more than welcome to. All right. Dragos wants help with keyword optimization, app description optimization, and competitive reviews. So I got all games for you, Kevin, in there. And I can even bring you some games too because we got a long list of apps. So I can get through our list faster by bringing you more games during the live stream as well. Sure, right. yeah. Anything on this front, Kevin, do you want to talk about? Maybe. The video, like, have you guys seen that video actually helps increase conversions on the app store when you have it's a, it's a little bit I, like this? Uh, honestly i don't know um i'm not i don't i wouldn't like to say one way or the other because i'm not privy i don't know uh, i know it can do and it makes sense that it could sometimes it it, it depends uh, this there's an argument to say that that you see everything so you're the the right people who like the game will download it but you don't get that mystery download because they wasn't quite sure so they might as well but if they watch the video they might decide then so i wouldn't like to say one way or another i would always put your best foot forward and probably add one if it was me personally releasing the game um but i don't have the data i mean that's again it's one of those things try it with and try it without I mean, you then you know, you know that's that's the beauty of these sort of things. Um, in terms of the, I mean, this is your bag, really, Steve. In terms of the ASO stuff, um, I did have a play of the game, which was pretty cool. Um, how, I don't know how long it's been out. It's got over a thousand downloads. That's pretty decent. Yeah, let's see. I think I changed let's that first see. screenshot as well. By the way. Um, yep. World. 
I don't think it explore what world and what's the game. So yeah, I'm not sure I would have that first. I would probably have a pure game. I'd probably have the second screenshot first, but again, it might be worth changing, uh, trying out the, the, the order of those. Um, but I did play this game and you put an extraordinary amount of work into this game. Um, so I did look, appreciate. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly touch on the ASO front right now. I think with these type of apps, like these runner games, I don't know. I'm just assuming that's what this is. One of the things I would try to test on the general front, I don't know if for games ASO is that important. Like unless it's Farkle, right? Like you know what the keyword is. This is what the dice game that, but for an app like this, like for example, or, you know, Subway Surfers, the brand is the game. It's not, you know, like you can go after, I guess, like endless runner, but you're going up against these behemoths. I feel like ASO wise, it's not that hugely important. It's going to be your brand that people search on. But having said that, I do think for Google, you know, you want to start showing up in these, you all might also, you might also like, and so start to think about like, what the competitors are and look, this is low hanging fruit. So it's not going to cost you anything to do this. I don't know if there's going to be a huge impact, but what I have been doing is because I know a little bit about YouTube optimization is adding tags on the YouTube videos for Google play, because what we've seen on SEO is that websites with video tend to rank higher. And so I thought, hey, why not try this where we'll optimize a video for the keywords we're going after the video tags down here. You know, you only have Indie Game Studio, the groups, like add a bunch of different ones that are very similar to your game, like Temple Run possibly and other things and have those as keywords because you might, you know, we saw for one of our clients, so small sample size, the Google Play Explore downloads dramatically increase after we optimize a YouTube video. So that's the nice. parameter that I'm trying to yeah, do. All right, Kevin. Yeah, just to, yeah, just, to add my, just to add my two cents on that, I think you're absolutely right in terms of games and the ASA. There's limited uh, stuff you can do for that. It's very unlikely that it's going to move the needle for you. It's good always to put, you have your, put the best practices in. Um, and again, I don't know, the Grugs I'm assuming is a made-up name. So if you're going for yeah, brand push, then obviously that's important. Adventure run story, you, you, you're up against such long-standing stuff. It's probably not going to do much for you. But yeah, I think you're right, Steve. Um, it's good points there. I didn't know that about the video either. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's just something I'm testing. I, I don't know if I can't confidently say that it will work or not. No, but I love it though. You're testing. That's the whole, right? So, you know, that's, that's kind of like the key takeaway, right? Just test everything and just, you never know, right? Yeah. Oh, I like this new way of casting onto with my Android. That's cool. This is great graphics. Like it doesn't, the, the cast does not do it justice. This, this is high end resolution, amazing graphics. I really like it. Yeah. There's a lot of love and a lot of uh, work gone into this game. See if there's audio that comes out. Oh, I don't know what's happening here. So I apologize. We don't have any video. I mean, audio. I can see the video. There's some music. You guys might be able to hear it. Don't get the. Egg. What do you think so far, Kevin? I feel like this is long, but well, I wanted your, yeah, your no, it is, it is a little bit long. There is a skip button there, so yeah, I did play this uh, quite a lot because um, I did. I wanted to give it justice because I can see immediately uh, how much I, we built one uh, an endless two D runner back in the day, and it, there's a, there's a lot that goes into it, and there's a lot of love that I think to yep. be fair. Um, this game, I forget who created this game. Um, they put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, and I think it's going to be difficult to get the results that you're going to, you want, uh, that it justifies for this type of game in 2022. Um, it's perfectly 
there's nothing wrong with this game. There's a lot of good things that you do in this game, and there's a huge shop, and there's tons of different controls, and you've done a lot right. Um, but just because it's a 2D runner, I think you'll struggle just by the very nature of the, of the game. Um, but, yeah, I mean, what do, what do you th- – uh, we're getting an ad here, I take it. Well, I wanted to give them some ad revenue too. I just two x the the level just for hey, you know. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Give them give them some love back. Yeah, I think like you said to the earlier point, Kevin, when you were studying games, what's really in the top market? I don't think these type of games, unless you're a subway surfer, which that's not even two D thing, but like they're. I don't see these type of games being the top charts anymore. I, so. I, I can tell you outright, Steve, that we have not seen a 2D landscape runner in the top charts. I'm going to just say three wow. years or something. You know, they, we just don't see them. Uh, we just don't mm-hmm. see them, which is why when you know go full circle about what do we do first? We go and see what's doing well and we try and get inspired about doing a version of something similar that works because there's the, the, the work and the love and the, and the, the craft that's gone into this game is really good, but it's just, yeah. I think it's a bit misplaced energy uh, and money and time. And, you know, it won't, I'm sure it won't achieve what you want it to do. And that's not because it's not any good. Um, right. It's sure there's things I would change, but there's always things that's right. But, at the end of the day, it's just a, it's a hard sell in 2022. Um, mm-hmm. You'll be very hard pushed to see any 2D games in the top 200. Uh, you know, there's there's a few outliers with maybe I don't know Bow Masters and, and, a, and a couple of others, but the 3D has dominated the charts for the longest time, and um, that's what the market expects now. I wouldn't do this like next level starts. Like you want to really get me to hit. Because I think what he can play, he can sort of start getting Dragos is the name. He can start getting more monetization, people doubling this. Kevin, this feels like fun run to me. The some of the game mechanics, the sliding, all that stuff going yeah. underneath things. The fun run's way more fun because you get to compete. There's like something to it that's an added element of competition that it really gets me more excited so like even if you did this like it would be more fun as a runner and then this is a little bit more difficult by seeing people like mega run those developers they did well with like i think it was what it was but they had a partnership with a big partnership with one of the like the big game developers so i'm mean, even thinking like hey you know try to work with an influencer you've got a great game but like maybe i know some of these ryan has a subway surfer ryan's 12 review as a subway surfer type of game i know fgtv a big youtube gamer that my kids watch they have their game so maybe work with an influencer we skin it to their characters and then maybe that gives you a better chance than just having the groogs yeah i think like that's so. actually a really good shout steve uh, i think to um to reskin this and repurpose this in with uh, something that little uh with someone else's ip i think would be the best chance you have for this one to 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 do anything because you then got the source of traffic and the uniqueness that you need because whilst there's a lot of good things that happen in this game you're not doing anything different um and it's really horrible to to say because i can see how much time this must have taken um there's a lot of good things in here but it, there's nothing new that you're bringing to the table it's just yeah and it and it's and it breaks my heart i swear to god i'm not i'm not trying to ruin you <laughs> or break your spirit but it, you just you know for these games that do well they do well for a reason because they're slightly different or they're really yeah. marketable basically and it's hard to hard to hard to face sometimes but you've got to be realistic about it um and yeah a tie in like you said steve i think would work really well yeah, and 
I was trying to think there was this movie. This is what I like to do too. There was this kid movie that was similar to this, the grooves. I forgot what it's called, but one thing you might want to look at would be maybe even the Flintstones caveman back to the ASO question. These are all keywords that I might try to go after to see if there's volume because there's a caveman. There's the, this reminds me of the Flintstones. And then there's that movie. If you know the movie Dragos, like think of that movie. Cause I do try to like have, movie titles too because they tend to have good traffic and lower competition even like podcaster so from an aso front think maybe having renaming from the groogs to uh, the caveman adventure i saw down here so things like that to help you if you don't have a ua budget to help you with some of the discoverability of the app is what i would do but yeah overall great app yeah, i agree with you kevin i mean we were like you put so much time and effort and we just want you to succeed and so that's why you're kind of hearing this like other options to go to all right yeah. kevin i keep you too much longer what anything else you want to cover here not really i just want to say uh well done to both of the the developers here for getting the game in the stores you know it's often forgotten it's often a hard struggle especially your very first one to get something live in the store you know yourself Steve. there's a lot of moving parts so congrats to that and like i said not here to break anyone's spirit but you know we i've always believed that having the having some tough love honest advice is the best sort of advice you can um and challenge challenge what I say to you. If you think differently, great. Let's have a conversation about it. And let's. How are you happy with the way it's going? Are you willing to change it up and you know do some of the things that we that we've done for the longest time? And we know it works. We know that if you look at the market, you can see what's happening. You know if you can be inspired by that, you could build a different product. And one thing I would like to say about that game because I feel like it must have taken you up a long time to build that i would really urge you to try and look at the pipeline of your development scope your projects back and then just do the mm. bare minimum to release the game and see how it's taken because you've added a massive shop there's tons of characters i don't know how many levels there's different there's so much in that game it must have taken us forever and i think you could have probably mm. cut your game in half and got the same result. So concentrate on what's important. Like I said, right back at the start, is your game fun? Because if you just add in a, a, a red jumper on a different character, it's not going to inherently make the game more fun. You're just adding stuff to, um, you know, a, a, an averagey type of game because you haven't set yourself out apart enough. I don't think. So yeah, try and try yeah. and pair back that a little bit. There's so much in here. Look at this shop; it's mad. And I applaud you for doing it, but there's so much work. And sadly, I'm not sure how much is going to get seen or used um, if you don't get the first bit sort of right. So look at trying to scale back the next project, whichever you do. Look at the market and see if you can emulate something a little bit more that's doing well for, for others right now. Because they've spent tens, if not hundreds, if not millions of dollars on user acquisition and they are there because they work and people are downloading because they like them, regardless of what you think. Great point. No better way to end than that. Look, guys, it is Homa Academy, H-O-M-A Academy. Just search for it on YouTube and you'll find Kevin going live every Friday at 7 a.m. So you go right Kevin, break, get some breakfast, get a workout in, come to me, now, but Homa Academy on YouTube. And then if you are a game developer, you want to work with a publishing company, go check out homagames.com, homagames.com. All that is also linked up into your favorite podcast app or your YouTube description. Kevin, if the audience wants to connect with you in any other way, do you want to send them anywhere else? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. So I'd just like to say, what? better way we have just fixed your friday mornings i think eh? that is like the perfect way to start friday so best place for me is come and hit me up on linkedin you'll find my full name or just better still come and join our discord uh, there is a link on pretty much every description of the video i forget the short link right now um but go and hit us up on uh, the discord and come and chat to us over there um, we'll be happy to see you and any questions you've got about Homer, me, the Academy, anything we've spoken about today, feel free to go and 
make me a friend or whatever they call it over on Discord. Uh, PM me, DM me, <laughs> or post in the open channels, and we'll uh, we'll have a conversation and be great to great to meet. So that's it. There we go. Oh my. Uh, Bit dot lie home Discord. A- That'll get you there. No problem. Yeah, what a great description. Look at all this stuff. Unleash your creativity. So it is the Discord. It's bit.ly, bit.ly, Discord. And then if you want your games published, bit.ly slash publish my game. Super easy, publish my game. But all that is, I'll link it all to the YouTube description as well. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. It is uh, the pleasure is all mine. Let's make this. Uh, uh, let's not wait so long next time, Steve. Uh, great to see you. Really Thank thrilled you. you reached out, so I appreciate that. And uh, good luck with everything that you're doing. You're super awesome, dude. And yeah, maybe we should do this. Um, we should do something else pretty soon. But yeah, I'm just pleased that yeah, we I- have got Fridays covered for everybody now. That's made my day. And Ricardo got one on it with the Ricardo's joke. I can't take my dog to the pond anymore because the ducks keep attacking him. That's what I get for buying a purebred dog. All right. And then we got Jill. Thanks, guys. Great chat. Thank you, Jilly, for coming on. Next week, we're going to have an indie developer. I love talking to indie developers. He's got an app. We're going to take a look at his app, give him feedback. So it might be a live coaching call type of thing, but I want to get his thoughts on things he's been testing and some of the new indie marketing strategies that he's been doing. He left his job. Now is full time with this app. So super excited to talk to him. Wow. He's also in our community that we have so join us join kevin 7 a.m next week and join me 9 a.m next week pacific time kevin thank you so much again and everybody else have a great weekend i'll see you bye have a great weekend everyone thanks dave <laughs> you threw that in there really fast huh <laughs> i like it <laughs>